Greetings, my name is Dr. Waddell Brooks Sr., your host, and this is Community Forum. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an outstanding person this uh, evening, um, uh, Mr. John Price, Superintendent, um, North Chicago Public School District 187, and he is a person that you should know. As a matter of fact, he's going to give us uh, the superintendent's uh, update here uh, in North Chicago. Greetings, uh, Mr. Price. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me. We're very happy that you've taken time from your busy schedule to uh, be with us on uh, Community Forum. Uh, I didn't give you very much time to get settled. <laughs> you, you only been here a year, right, as superintendent? Just over, just over. Just, right, just over right, a year. Right. And so we want to uh, let Lake County know who you are and what your goals, objectives are, and so forth. Um, so why don't we start with there? Tell our listening audience, and our listening audience is uh, Lake County, uh, which is uh, Comcast uh, is about, uh, audience is about 100,000 people. But uh, the show airs in Cook County, uh, Kenosha County uh, as well. And for those that are aggressive, they can get the show online. Mm -hmm. uh, drbrooks.tv is shown. So if you have not been known over the world, you will be after this show. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, tell our listening audience a little bit about your personal and prof professional background. Sure. Um, again, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Okay. Um, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a career educator. Uh, I, I started teaching in, in Chicago uh, just a couple of days after I graduated from college. Mm. Uh, I flew here the day after I graduated, uh, the next morning. Uh, and, and was student teaching in a, in a high school that summer, completed student teaching in ninth grade uh, in a high school summer program, um, and uh, was not intending to stay with teaching. Uh, mm -hmm. I came to Chicago for a two-year volunteer teaching commitment. I taught for two years in, in Catholic schools uh, on the west side of Chicago, but during that time really fell in love with, with teaching and, and felt like that that uh, was my vocation uh, mm -hmm. um, and my way to serve other people. So I, I've committed myself to uh, teaching since that time and have had the uh, fortune to teach um, seventh grade and eighth grade, third grade, fifth grade, um, and then to work as a coach, as an instructional coach, and work with teachers across the spectrum of kindergarten through eighth grade. Mm -hmm. um, and then in Chicago Public Schools, started um, an administrative career as an assistant principal, principal, and then um, finally as a, um, a regional superintendent in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Um, I got my master's degree at University of Illinois at Chicago. Uh, I was in a very, um, an excellent program there and, uh, that helped prepare me for those, those administrative roles. Um, and then um, moved to Evanston and became the assistant superintendent uh, in Evanston. Um, and uh, just this, for this past year, served as the superintendent in, in North Chicago. So um, that's, that's the outline of, of my educational career. Uh, and I've been at this since 1995. Well, what piqued your interest in uh, North Chicago School District 187? Well, I think <coughs> that in, in my career um, in education, I have um, always been very committed to serving communities that are in need, mm -hmm. um, and specifically communities that are, have been historically marginalized or communities that have been have been underinvested, received underinvestment. And um, that was true on the south side of Chicago where I started my teaching careers, true on the west side of Chicago. Um, and unfortunately it's been true in North Chicago uh, as well. This is a community and a school system um, that has not gotten the kind of investment um, and had the, that, the students, that the students deserve. Mm -hmm. And so the academic performance of the students in the district is not where we want it to be, is not where it should be for our students. And so that commitment that I have to serving uh, historically marginalized students and their families um, was an opportunity here in North Chicago to come to a school district. Um, and as I interviewed here and got a chance to meet board members, meet community members, meet teachers, um, it was also a, a school community that was very committed to making the changes needed to make that growth. Mm -hmm. um, not every community wants to change, mm -hmm. uh, wants mm -hmm. to improve. Mm -hmm. uh, in North Chicago, the folks that I met here, the stakeholders I met, made it very clear that they were interested in turning a corner, that making hard decisions, uh, implementing changes in order to serve students better. Well, it's great that you found North Chicago. Most people 
When you say North Chicago, they think of the north side the north of side. Chicago. I've found yeah. that out since I've come here. That's been a, uh, uh, you know, wh what do you mean you're the superintendent of North Chicago? Isn't there one? I said, well, it's, it's a little different. A little different. Right. Yeah. Well, since you've been here, um, what's unique about the school district here that uh, you found? Uh, a couple of things are very unique about the school district here. One is uh, the opportunity to serve <coughs> uh, students in the military, military-connected families. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's about 14 percent of the students in North Chicago schools are military-connected. Mm -hmm. So having a chance to uh, work with Naval Station Great Lakes, their commander, their staff there, serve the students and their families that are connected there, um, that's unique about the school district. Of course, the relationship with uh, ISBE, the Illinois State Board of Education, and the state control over the school district is unique. Um, having two different boards, an independent authority with five members, mm -hmm. and a financial oversight panel with five different members, all appointed by the state superintendent, um, that's unique. Uh, I did serve the other appointed board uh, in the state of Illinois when I worked for Chicago Public Schools, but this is a unique situation here uh, that's been in place since 2012. Um, and then I think it's also unique, the um, mix of district managed schools and charter schools here. That is also a unique aspect of the district. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, tell us about the charter school. Um, have you found that to be a uh, conflict in the educational controls or that's kind of uh, independent? program from uh, the school district? They are, they are independent uh, and the school district authorizes those schools but does not manage those schools on a, on a daily basis. Um, so uh, we do provide their uh, a large portion of their funding that mm -hmm. comes from the same sources as the rest of the district's schools do. We fund them on a student-based budget model. Um, we do some evaluation of those mm -hmm. schools as well that they are compliant with state and federal law. Um, and that they are meeting their goals uh, for academic outcome goals. So I think that's, that's the primary nature of our relationship uh, with the charter schools and I think we try to, um, although there are some, we, we have some disagreements, but we try to really mm -hmm. stay focused on what we have in common, which is a desire to serve the students mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. in the best way we can. Another uniqueness too, and I was just uh, uh, studying the district myself and as is a decrease in the number of attendance centers. Now there's, we used to have, oh, I don't know the, the number there, but eight or nine attendance centers and... Uh, yeah, there are at least uh, four schools that have been closed uh, okay. in the school district. Okay. Um, is there a problem there? Uh, is, it, is that the lack of students in the district? Uh, or yes. Is, or uh, is it the charter school? Uh, well, the number of effect? students that are, that are attending the school district has has decreased slowly over the past uh, several you know, period of period of years, over the past ten years or so. Um, I, I think the project that Lake County is completing oh. uh, to um, they're rebuilding a uh, housing project just on the on the north end of North Chicago, mm -hmm. uh, right there on now Audrey Nixon Boulevard. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, so that's returning, and so we're going to expect to see some of the students return to that housing. So that's there will be some students returning there. So we're prepared for uh, both uh, a slight increase um, and to stay steady, and then also if there is a slight decrease, we'll be prepared there as well. Mm -hmm. I was noticing Hart School is there. It's it's it's. Uh, Close the uh, South School. South School is, uh, South is, uh, is uh, 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 um, but it's it's not empty. South School has another program there. That's right. Um, South School is home to a fantastic program, Team Build, uh, Lake County Team Build. Youth Build. Youth Build. Yeah. Thank you. They do work in teams, <laughs> but you're right. Thank you, Dr. Brooks. Okay. Youth Build, um, an alternative educational program for students. Um, they use a construction focus yeah. to engage students that have been disengaged from school. Um, so that uses about half of that building, and we use the other half for storage and material management. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Lindbergh bent uh, for a long time, of course, used to, be, used to be there, but we haven't had it as an attendance center for a long time. That's right. Right across yes. the street from the high school Correct. there. You know. And the other one, I guess, the Novak King has been occupied for, un, un, um, unoccupied for for a long time, too. For several years, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that uh, was a sixth grade center Okay. Um, and then the sixth graders were brought over to Neal Middle School, mm -hmm. uh, and so that center was closed as well. 
Now, with the anticipation of the great number of students coming from the the building project there on 14th and Dugdale, Audrey Nixon Boulevard, as you mentioned, uh, there's possibility of uh, opening up another one. Uh, That's um, the projections that we see right now uh, that we're getting from Lake County Housing uh, looks at about 200 additional students at maximum capacity. Okay. Um, I, I think between the current district schools and the charter schools, we can accommodate that number of students with our current buildings. Oh, okay. Um, so I, I think also the, the investment that would be required to reopen one of the uh, currently closed buildings is a significant funding gap to find those resources. So I think uh, currently with those projections, we can accommodate, mm -hmm. um, we can accommodate those students um, for the foreseeable future. It appears to be a great challenge for you in the management of the administrative management of these of the school district because you have two boards to answer to. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> you know, tell us what. Well, well that's by, 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 by the state state boards. Yes, there, there are two state appointed boards. Okay. Um, there are members of both boards that are members of the North Chicago community. Yeah. Um, other members of the board that are experts in the field, um, in the field of education and in the field of finance. And so um, the boards work very, very well together. Mm -hmm. um, every policy decision expenditure goes to the independent authority first. Mm -hmm. um, they discuss it, an independent authority um, must approve that. And then if there's any kind of dollar figure attached or a policy that would impact any kind of financial, fiscal, or budgetary issues, then it must also go to the, the financial oversight or the FOP for approval also. Um, that process has been, has been seamless uh, mm -hmm. over the past year. Mm -hmm. uh, I communicate, of course, all the time with both chairpersons. Right. Uh, we work very closely together and they're incredibly supportive of the mission uh, that we're on in, in North Chicago and very focused on, the, on their role. So the relationships between the board and um, my office and the board and the school district are very strong, they're very good. And uh, we've, got, we've got great board members. We're very yeah. fortunate, very fortunate. Non-paid board members, too, right? That's correct, unpaid. Okay. Yes. Very, very, very fantastic. Um, Let's see, I think that's, uh, oh yeah, I was raised in East St. Louis. Is that right? Illinois. Okay, okay. yeah. And uh, <clears throat> they have the same challenge the state has taken over, but they have the same board. They still have, an, uh, my understanding is, is that they still, they have an elected board. Okay. Yeah, okay. but they, I believe they do have a financial oversight panel okay. that's in place. And the only other one I know is Round Lake, I guess, was uh, state control too. So they was... also had a financial oversight panel, okay. um, and they exited uh, the financial oversight panel some years ago mm -hmm. under uh, now retired Dr. Collins, superintendent mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully that uh, in another, how, how long are we under the auspices of the state board? You said another few years. Typically, financial oversight panels operate for 10 years, uh, and we're just we're just beginning year seven. Okay, okay. Fair. Well, tell us about your philosophy of uh, education. Sure. Well, I think um, education begins with the, the begins and ends with the three R's. But but the 21st century three R's are relationships, rigor, and relevance. Okay. And and. and in that order, frankly, uh, relationships come first. That's one of the values of the staff in North Chicago that's been talked about and expressed to me over and over and over again. That, um, you know, the old saying that kids don't care what you know until they know that you care. Okay. Um, and that we have to first and foremost build relationships uh, between the adults uh, and between the students and between the adults and the students. That education starts with caring relationships with kids. Okay. Um, so that's the beginning. Um, uh, around our approach to education. Um, the next part is, is rigor and setting high expectations. Uh, we know and research has proven over and over again that children will rise to the ex level of expectation that is set by the adults. Um, and that's the parents, uh, the community, and the, the staff in the schools. And mm -hmm. so setting high expectations, delivering a rigorous, challenging, um, aligned curriculum is very important for our students. Um, and they will rise to the level of expectations that we set for them. Mm -hmm. um, and then the final piece is relevance, uh, making what is learned and what is taught important to, to our students. How does this matter to them? How, do their life, how does their life experience impact 
what they're learning. What do they bring to the topic? It's not just the teacher sharing information and telling them what they need to know. The students also uh, have a lived experience that they can bring into the classroom to enrich the teacher and their peers as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think one of one highlight of, of the work on relevance are the career pathways um, that were started in, in the high school four years ago. Um, and we currently have three pathways as a part of our strategic plan. We'll consider um, additional pathways, but those are opportunities for students to explore careers in three different pathways, healthcare, information technology, engineering, manufacturing, design, and to take specialized classes in those areas, apply those classes to the rest of their learning, and mm -hmm. explore mm -hmm. what would a career in that pathway uh, look like. Mm -hmm. We want to take that kind of experience, that kind of approach, and cascade that down into eighth grade, seventh grade, sixth grade, um, that kind of approach to building relevance into the curriculum from the ground up. Tell us about the um, <coughs> community resources uh, that you have. Uh, to be successful, I guess you really need community resources, but tell about, it. You, you're so rich in community resources. You want to tell us uh, a few of the resources that you have? Well, we're very fortunate. I think um, you know, that starts with our relationship with the city and the city government. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Mayor Rockingham has been extraordinarily supportive of our schools um, with, with his presence, uh, with his support of his team, uh, and we have a great partnership with, with the city. Okay. Um, in Lake County, um, College of Lake County, CLC is a strong partner. Um, the Tech Campus of Lake County, um, uh, Rosalind Franklin is a tremendous partner um, in the educational sphere. And then we have tremendous corporate partners, um, beginning with AbV, um, okay. which is a, a very supportive partner. They've really claimed North Chicago as their home address, as their front porch, um, and have invested tremendously in our schools. Um, and also are developing relationships with other corporations and businesses uh, in the area. Um, and then we have some um, organizations that have grown up right here in North Chicago. For example, North Chicago Community Partners, mm -hmm. uh, which is not funded by the district, but uh, exclusively serves the school district. And they run after school community school programs for our students. Uh, they provide um, staff and student celebrations throughout the school year um, and are always available when called upon uh, to, to help. So I think the, the government partnerships that we have with the city, and I did fail to mention the Navy, which is a strong partnership oh, yeah. of ours, yeah. of course, um, the educational partnerships and then the business partnerships that we have, um, creates an ecology around each student and, and, and around our school district that is a tremendous resources for our school district and our kids. And don't forget to mention uh, the former supporter, Daisy's Resource and Developmental Center. Right. That's prior to your coming, though. Right, that, that was prior to my, my arrival, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Okay. But uh, okay. And I'm uh, sure there's there's others that I've uh, that the list goes on, and there's a long list of, of of partners and organizations that are interested, and it keeps growing. Oh yeah. Um, you know, we've just received uh, you know uh, information from from uh, the Rotary Club that wants to partner with the district. Um, we have a we have a group coming in this weekend from um, Lake Forest. that's going to be doing community service in our schools and. Um, outdoors or outside of our schools. So um, the list is growing of, of folks who really want to be supportive of the schools in North Chicago. Mm -hmm. I think it's probably one of the unique uh, things in in the city too, in the school district too, is have all of these resources here yeah. available. That's right. Makes us make us successful. Um, tell us about your um, you have personal goals, I guess, uh, short-term, and you have long-term goals. Sure. Um, we are we are discussing our in the process of of creating and finalizing a five-year strategic strategic yeah. plan. Mm -hmm. uh, we've begun that process by creating a mission statement, creating a vision, uh, creating a values statement uh, for the school district, and also writing goals. Mm -hmm. um, and so. Those goals will be finalized at the board meeting in August, August 21st, 6.30 uh, p.m. Uh, at the high okay. school. Uh, community is welcome, it's public open meetings. Everyone's encouraged to attend. Um, and the areas where we're setting goals are first and foremost around um, early childhood achievement. And so mm -hmm. we're considering um, and have drafted a goal around third grade achievement in reading and in mathematics, uh, making sure that all of our students at that early benchmark in third grade are on the track, on track to uh, high school and, and post-secondary success. Mm -hmm. 
Um, our second goal is around improving the rate at which all of our students at every grade level grow. So wherever students start, be it far ahead of grade level or far behind grade level or right in the middle, um, our goal is to make sure that every student grows every year and grows uh, at and above national averages. Um, and so the second goal is around growth and making sure that every student is making growth every year. Um, the third goal that we have is around high school graduation um, and moving that high school graduation rate up each year of a five-year plan um, so that we can reach and exceed regional, state, and national averages. Um, and, and the final goal is around um, post-secondary success. What do our children do when they leave us, when they graduate? Uh, what are the options that they have? Um, and so our mission statement um, that we've drafted and we'll finalize in August 21st, on August 21st, is around empowering students mm -hmm. to create their own pathway, to create their own plan, and to not be told by, uh, but to create it themselves. Um, and then also to be prepared to follow that pathway that they've chosen for themselves. So um, we want to make sure that every child, when they leave us, has a plan, has a post-secondary um, plan for what they're going to do when they graduate from high school. And that might be straight into a career, that might be into a short-term certification program and then career, that might be to CLC, might be to four-year university, might be to military, um, but that every child has a plan that they've chosen that's exciting and engaging for them, uh, that they see themselves and, and what they want to see for themselves in, in the future. So that's our fourth goal. Um, and I think the first three lead up to that. Uh, mm -hmm. What are our students empowered and prepared to do after they graduate? There was, uh, um, probably still is, an organization, and I can't call a name of it, that trains students, uh, 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 reward students, I should say. Hmm. They, they adopt the students and reward them uh, up to college. It gives college scholarships. Warner, uh, is it Warner? Uh, we have the, the program that we have at North Chicago Community High School is the Schuler program. Schuler. Yes, Schuler so program. Yeah. So they don't, um, they don't give scholarships, but they do everything else you said. <laughs> okay. uh, and so they identify um, first generation um, uh, college ready students, identify those students as eighth graders, rising eighth graders, and then provide uh, the group of students with summer experiences, uh, college tours, uh, internship uh, and travel opportunities, uh, additional tutoring, uh, challenging classwork, uh, and really try and, and wrap uh, supports and opportunities around a group of students so that they're ready for um, college success and, okay. and help students apply to um, primarily private liberal arts schools that offer the best financial aid mm -hmm. oftentimes for our students uh, so that it's uh, almost if not completely free for them to go with their financial aid. Um, so they really work with students and families all the way through that for it's a four year process uh, for our Schiller students. Well, well the, to continue with that, the Navy at one time provided scholarships for, for youngsters to go to, I guess the ROTC program, you still have that? We do, we have a, we have a uh, very robust ROTC program, Navy ROTC program in the school. Um, and we are working to develop uh, and raise funds for a, a scholarship program. So uh, we'll be initiating this year a North Chicago uh, Public School Foundation um, that will seek to raise funds and provide, our goal would be to provide every student that wants to continue their education with a full scholarship. That's our goal. Okay. And it's gonna take some time to get there. Um, but we already have a number of scholarships from um, local chapters of sororities uh, from individuals, um, from folks who graduated from North Chicago or have a mom that graduated from North Chicago Community High School mm -hmm. uh, that want to give back. And so you asked earlier about some of the, um, uh, some of the support that we have. We have, a, we have a number of people that want to find ways to give back. And so we're going to create a foundation that can receive those funds and disperse those funds for students to go to college, uh, to go to certification programs, to extend their education any way they choose. I didn't, I'd like to follow up on... Uh, um the Navy, you may call them scholarships or uh, enhancements that go into service they, they, uh, from the ROTC and so forth. Mm -hmm. Do, are those still, are Navy still rewarding the students or inviting the students to, to join and, 
Well, the and students the are, given no are certainly scholarships. invited to, to join, um, and uh, some students are recruited to join, um, and then students take an assessment, take a test yeah. um, before, before joining, and then the Navy uses that assessment to help um, students pick a, a job and a career within the Navy uh, that they'd like to pursue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, um, past president, I guess you just was president uh, uh, Bush, had a program called No Child Left Behind. I would like to know, is that program still active in the country? Uh, so that program's been, it, it's the Title I funding and, and the federal funding for schools, it's been reauthorized uh, okay. and renamed. Um, Ren okay. And, and, and renamed, and so that, the No Child Left Behind brand, if you will, is not, is <laughs> okay. not still. Not right, like because it. when he uh, when he authorized it, there was no funding. It was a mandate, but no funding. Well, there was the uh, funding. Uh, what do you call from it? The, unfund mandate, I guess. Well, there were there was title funding um, that's been um, that the federal government has provided to schools: Title One, Title Two, II, Title Nine, um, um, Title Three. I mean, all of these different titles that come to schools through um, through federal. And so the the rules and the focus of those funds has evolved um, from. President Bush to President Clinton to President Bush, um, President Obama, and um, really where President Obama took those funds was uh, adding additional funds to the American Recovery Act mm -hmm. and uh, okay. Race to the Top funds. Um, another enhancement for the students was, I guess, nutrition is important. Do you still have the, is it breakfast, hot breakfast, uh, hot lunch programs? We do. We offer uh, breakfast and lunch to every student. Oh, okay. Um, we are. Um, we That's don't a, to every student you mentioned. That's right. Okay. That's right to every student. Um, so with the, um, the students in, in that we serve in North Chicago, are over ninety percent free and reduced lunch, and so we're part of a federal program that that waives that application process for every student, um, so that every student has access to breakfast and lunch every day. Um, and then students who stay with us for after school programming also have, have a snack as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So there are for some students that we provide uh, three meals for a day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At one time, uh, the Navy had the majority of students in the school and there was additional funding for those students that were coming. But now the percentage of Navy students is not there anymore. Um, where have they gone? Well, I think the, um, we still receive um, impact aid funding from the federal government for the impact of, that the Navy base has uh, that's not taxable property and schools are funded primarily through property taxes. Okay. Um, so the federal government does um, invest money in the schools um, because of that federal impact. So the impact that the Navy base has, uh, the loss of property taxes, the loss of sales taxes that that land could create for the school district, uh, we do receive funding for the federal government um, for those funds, and that's about $4 million a year. Oh. That's a significant portion of our, of our budget. Um, and that money has been, is dedicated to um, paying down long-term debt for the district. Um, part of the debt that was, a um, large portion of the debt that was taken out in 2012 one of the factors that led to the state takeover uh, was that debt that was sold at that time. So we're mm. going to be paying off that debt. And so that's where the majority of that impact aid funding now goes to. Although the district has benefited from also our partnership with ISBE, um, and they provide additional funding to the school district as well so that we can use some of those funds to invest in programs, staff, personnel uh, for our students. Um, so, so that's where that, how that funding is used. Tell us about the curriculum that you have. Uh, I'd say you have mostly a um, uh, minority population now. It's, I mentioned about the Navy students are not there like they used to be, mm -hmm. but uh, mostly minority population. But what have your curriculum uh, changed uh, to accommodate uh, the minority population? So we're making significant changes in our curriculum this school year. Mm -hmm. uh, we're adopting a new kindergarten through fifth grade English reading arts, reading language arts program. Mm -hmm. uh, we're adopting a new kindergarten through fifth grade mathematics program. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also adopted a new ninth through twelfth grade literature program. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the criteria that was used by our uh, teachers and administrators that selected those programs were uh, representations in the literature of 
characters, stories that look like our students, that our stu where our students can find relevance that I mentioned earlier. And role models and so forth. I I yeah. Exactly. And, yeah. and so that there are authors and there are characters in what our students are reading that, that look like our students, that our students can identify with. Um, and also um, characters and authors that, are, that will challenge our students to, to um, think beyond their own, their own identity. But we want to be able to have students be able to see themselves reflected in the curriculum. That's that relevance piece. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you had mentioned before, I think we may emphasize on this, a student uh, meeting the state academic levels. Uh, how, how, what is, uh, how are you getting the students prepared to meet the levels? Well, that's really the focus of, of our mission, to prepare students um, for the plan that they put in place for themselves. Um, and that's really the core of, of our goals as well, is to increase the percentage of students that are meeting and exceeding those state standards. Um, I mentioned the curriculum um, that we've put into place. We've also put into place new technology uh, in every single kindergarten through fifth grade classroom and classrooms at the high school. We're right now installing new interactive uh, Promethean boards, TV boards, displays for students and teachers, um, providing new materials, um, professional development for our staff. All of those efforts are really focused around preparing students. Um, this year, for the first time in the district, we're also going to be offering a dual language English and Spanish kindergarten experience oh. for students. Um, so that students <coughs> who um, are coming from homes where they speak only English and right. students who are coming from homes where they speak only Spanish will be in class together and mm -hmm. will learn both languages, um, which is really strongly supported by educational research that whether you start with Spanish or you start with English, if you learn both, you, go, you can go farther. Uh, okay. and achieve, achieve more uh, in your education. So we want to offer that opportunity to more and more students each year. I was watching uh, the uh, sports. Uh, <coughs> uh, Serena Williams is one. Mm. Her, you know, she just had a daughter last September, and she's teaching her daughter French. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, well, that's another. I don't know how popular French is in the in the schools, but I know yeah, sure. Spanish Absolutely. and English, you know. Well, bilingualism is, is a strength and, and is an asset. And some of our students walk in the door with, with some levels of bilingualism. Uh, and, and we want to build upon that. We don't, mm -hmm. don't want to extinguish that because it's a strength mm -hmm. um, that, that our students come with. And we want to help build upon that strength and, and help other students who come with uh, one language to build and, and have two. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that we see as a great opportunity for all of our students in North Chicago. Um, we're starting that in kindergarten this year, at both Alexander and at Forstall. Mm -hmm. and we'll see that grow. Great. Well, you, you mentioned Alexander. That's a new term now, a name of a new school that people may not be, all people may not be familiar with. But that was uh, uh, in honor of uh, Alexander, uh, uh, what, North School? It was North School uh, oh, yeah. previously and was renamed just last year uh, for Evelyn Alexander, okay. uh, a, a, a person who still is on our board, is on the independent authority, mm -hmm. has been working in Lake County and in North Chicago for 60 years, um, has served on every school board uh, in North Chicago, elementary school, high school, combined and now mm -hmm. state managed. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a privilege to have a chance to work with Mrs. Alexander. Um, and uh, the uh, a school board last year and with the previous superintendent um, chose to give her that honor of renaming the school after her. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah I, I served with her on a, let's see, grade school board, District 6. We had a District 63 on the north end of town, District 64, both grade schools. Mm -hmm. Then the high school was 123. And so they decided to make it one district right. and just combine the numbers uh, 187. Right. Right, yeah, I heard yeah. that story, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Great person. Well, <clears throat> for students that are probably not going to college, what about vocational education? I know when my three kids went through, uh, that was home economics, that was shop, that was music, because my daughter was a drum major in the, okay. in the band, you know, and, and um, what well, was foreign languages, we mentioned about that, just uh, um, taught. But what happened to these programs? Do you have any plans on rejuvenating uh, these programs? So I think what, what was called vocational education, yeah. now the, the, the term of the day is career technical education, CTE. Okay. And, and that's really w in line with those three pathway programs that I mentioned earlier 
in our conversation. And so in information technology, in healthcare, and in engineering, manufacturing, design, um, there are opportunities for our students to go straight into career, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. to take the training and take the experience that they receive, um, and to either with a short certification program or with no additional training, go straight into a, a career-aligned profession. You know, Lake County is home to um, uh, one of the greatest centers of manufacturing in our country. Yeah. Um, they're hungry for um, talent. Mm -hmm. They're hungry for people to, to uh, work with them and can, uh, are really looking for opportunities to recruit and retain great talent. So there's great opportunities for our students in careers. Um, and so we're offering programs like Project Lead the Way. Uh, we're working with the Tech Campus. Um, working on this year, this summer, we offered internships and apprentice opportunities for a small group of students. Mm -hmm. We want to expand those opportunities um, so that students who are interested in and engaged um, and want to go into a career or want to work with their hands mm -hmm. um, or want to start with the career and think about college later, there are great opportunities for our kids that are interested in that here in Lake County. So I was just on a, on a manufacturing tour um, this week on, on Tuesday and with the counseling department at the high school toured three manufacturing plants here in Lake County mm -hmm. um, to look at the opportunities. What, what, does, what does manufacturing look like in 2018? What do these jobs look like for our students and, and what are the opportunities that are there and how do we prepare our students? Um, the students that I've talked to at North Chicago Community High School, a number of them are, are very, very interested in, in these kinds of manufacturing jobs. They're, they're computer-based jobs, they're tech, heavy technology jobs, mm -hmm. um, they're really engaged and excited by that kind of opportunity and so we want to do what we can to prepare students for that kind of work. So I think vocational training, CTE, um, is coming back. Um, I, I think there's an understanding that any, any single pathway is not going to serve all kids, mm -hmm. even if that okay. single pathway is to college. Uh, we want to have multiple pathways for students. Mm -hmm. uh, what about um, uh, private schools versus public colleges. I'm sure you probably got some studies on that. Uh, um, there's a, well we have community college too. We call it CLC versus a community college, you know. Are they growing? Uh, and uh, what about the, uh, I, was, I was wondering about the cost there too. Uh, the cost of attending uh, private schools now compared to public schools. Yeah, well, I think uh, you should have Lori Sudak on your program. She's the new president of CLC. She oh. comes from a career technical education okay, uh, background. Yeah. So, um, and our partnership with CLC is very strong. And so um, we um, offer programming for a number of our students. They offer free tuition for our most highly qualified students oh. that can attend CLC for free through a special program mm -hmm. that, uh, um, uh, for our students in, in North Chicago. Um, our students can also take classes at CLC while they're students at North Chicago and do dual credit, dual enrollment programs, uh, get a feel for what college enrollment and college course demands are like there. So that partnership with CLC is, is an important part of, of the pathway, multiple pathways that we can offer for our students. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is fantastic, you know. Yeah. Um, but I just, your question yeah. was about private versus public yeah, college yeah. education, and I would just warn parents um, not just to look at the sticker price of colleges. And that while it's not always true, it is often true that private universities have also have large endowments okay. that they can use to help defray some of those costs and offer financial aid. Um, and so each college has a different level of financial aid that they can offer based upon their funding, their enrollment, their endowment. And so oftentimes schools that start off as appearing to be the most expensive once you account for the level of support that they'll provide, it really closes that gap for families. Mm -hmm. So um, our counseling department, our post-secondary counseling department encourages children and our students to look at a wide variety of schools and not just to assume, well, private school, I can't afford it. I gotta mm -hmm. go to public school. May not be true, um, mm -hmm. depending upon the school and your qualifications. Uh, we touched upon this, but you may want to elaborate on uh uh, parental uh, participation, the effect that has on the, on the students in the school. Well, we know that parental participation has a positive impact on, on students. And the more involved students' parents are in the life of the school, the better that child does. Okay. 
Um, and so um, family and community engagement is, is, is a one core of our strategic plan. Uh, uh, we know that as a school district, we have to do a better job of engaging all of our families, uh, bringing families in to mm -hmm. the school, taking the school out to families, providing different opportunities for parents to become more involved. Yeah. Um, so that's one of our, our responsibilities to make sure that we've got those kinds of opportunities. Um, not just open house and report card pickup nights, but programming, educational opportunities, leadership opportunities for parents to be in our schools um, and feel comfortable and be there to support their kids. Um, prior to, I know we, when I was coming, coming through, parent teachers organizations, uh, um, the kind of PTA, PTOs, right. are they still active? Were they active last year? They, they are active. Um, you know, I think in, in, in a number of our schools, I think the kind of the booster and PTO at the high school is um, does some more activities than some of the other groups. Mm -hmm. that's, that's one piece, though, is to make sure that we have an active PTO in each of our schools. And, and sometimes those, those organizations ebb and flow with the, with the individuals that are more engaged, and then that person graduates or leaves, um, and then so we've got to find another leader for that organization. Okay, okay. Fantastic. Uh, an, another thing on the athletic programs, I know baseball, I know basketball is always uh, the top Perennial, sport. Perennial, yeah, uh, right, right. When you think of Gerald Coleman. Right, right, Coach Coleman, <laughs> He sure. went to uh, my alma mater, Illinois State, okay. and came back. He's been a great force in the basketball. Yeah. But what about the other, what about baseball and uh I guess track and and I, I can say track too. We have uh, I don't have the names of the four here, but I know um, is a pastor of church in Zion, McBride. Uh, you had a uh, King, uh, one of your the presidents, her son, okay, mm -hmm. your daughter King, right? Of course, yeah. King um, Michael Wright. And so I'm calling the names Michael Wright, and uh, there's a they set a record. 1985 relay record that stood until uh, uh, just recently. I asked uh, King, he came, he's a coach, I think he's a track coach at Notre Dame. Okay. You know? That's and, great. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, so there, there's the outstanding, and I'm just naming a few there, but what about these, uh, 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 these, you, you ever thought about bringing the athletic teams to focus so like we, they used to be? We, we have a, a, a rich athletic history, but yeah. also current offerings at, at North Chicago. A um, couple of things that, that, that we'd like to do is to continue to invest in our sports and our athletics. And uh, we had a state uh, finalist in wrestling this year. Oh, see. Uh, for the first time in, in quite a while. We had our state uh, qualifying basketball team this year. We had a number of, uh, of our young men go down state for uh, track uh, this year as well. Um, and we've got growing programs in volleyball and soccer. Um, baseball and softball are, are young programs uh, okay. that are still building. Um, and, and so we're continuing to maintain our investment in our athletic programs. We see that as a, as a way to engage students. Uh, last year when I sat with the, with the athletic director, uh, we looked at GPAs and our athletes had higher average GPAs than our non-athletes, uh, mm -hmm. especially when they're in season. So we see that as a way to engage and, and support the academics, um, and we don't think that athletics takes away from that. So we see those, the athletics and the academics really supporting uh, one another. And so we want to also find, um, we're adding back um, music programs to the elementary schools that's been absent for some time. Mm -hmm. So we'll have a music teacher in kindergarten through third grade for the first time in, in a number of years. I'm trying to bring those other opportunities for students to find extracurricular ways to um, build their own self-identity, um, practice, um, succeed and fail um, it, uh, outside of the classroom because we think that enriches their classroom experience and keeps kids engaged in school. Mm -hmm. So we want to build upon our athletics program and, and uh, I'm a, a high school and college athlete. I was a uh, track um, athlete myself. So I see the importance there but I was also raised in a home uh, with my mother was a professional musician. Mm. Um, not an athlete but a professional musician and so that was her pathway. Um, and so while we can't be all things to all people, 
um, we can offer a myriad of opportunities and, and after school programmings. Um, Neal Middle School this year won a, a, a five year grant uh, through the Illinois State Board of Education, $75,000 a year to do out of school programming. Mm. So we just had a planning, our first planning meeting today. What kinds of opportunities can we provide for students outside of the school that they don't have right now? Okay. Um, so enrich academics, get students started in sixth grade. Uh, that'll just help coach uh, with his basketball team in ninth and tenth grade. If we can start students in sixth grade, um, start you know a, um, a, a JV soccer program for students in sixth grade and seventh grade and eighth grade, um, as well as other kind of cultural arts as well are some of the things we're talking about. So um, we're applying for grants, uh, we're maintaining our funding for our athletics and trying to uh, bring back music uh, and music programming to the district as well. Yes, so we had a top music program. We did, you know. we did. And the district has a really proud history in music as well. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're going back to that future. Mm -hmm. um, you might tap into uh, Great Lakes, whoever the proper person to contact, because uh, uh, several years ago, they gave two million dollars to Chicago schools, hmm. and and uh, the community was wondering. We have a school district is suffering and need funds. You know, but they give. So I guess it depends on the contact. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. aware of that. Yeah, yeah. Several. Oh, uh, uh, several things. Uh, uh, oh, I see. Susan Garrett, uh, for retired um, state representative gave $200,000 to North Chicago's, uh, the, the, um, the, what's it called, program, the media, the media program. Oh, okay. $200,000. Right. Now, so the, the equipment that you're using over there, it's, uh, and she gave it for the purpose of, I guess, training students, you know, mm -hmm. to. Uh, now, we, uh, Ms. Price, we know that education is a key, right? We know we, we talked about all these other programs. But education is still the key to success in life. Um, you mentioned about uh, the the top s students in sports. You know they got the higher higher grades than none participants, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But education is still the key, right? Absolutely, that's true. You're not gonna have a hard time convincing me of that. That's been my <laughs> my life's work. Um, you know, I, I I see the impact that my education has had upon me and the opportunities that I've had um, because of the education that I had access to um, and because of the opportunities that, that that's provided me to and, and we see that's, I, I believe that's true for all of our students, um, that education is, is the key and we want to make sure that that, that education is, is uh, relevant and rigorous um, and, and we feel like students can find that key and find that pathway in our schools. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, fantastic. Um, of course, we talk about all the different relationships, but uh, you have to have a good relationship with the county, the Lake County Superintendent of Schools. Matter of fact, I mentioned the Lake County Superintendent of Schools, but Royce Wood, the regional superintendent of schools, she started right in North Chicago. She did. She was she a was counselor. A oh, you, you, yeah, she's a you've done your research yeah, on that, absolutely. right? Absolutely. <laughs> We've had a chance to, to meet and work with her quite a bit. And she's very supportive of our schools and our mission in North Chicago. Mm -hmm. So she's a great, uh, a great supporter and a great resource for our students. Right, very good, right, right. Okay, um, we want to, before we end the program, we want to, I just have to mention uh, about the, I mentioned about the, uh, the minority um, um, students in, your, in the school. Uh, the importance of African American history curriculum, you mentioned about the great athletic programs and so forth, the music programs. We used to have a great African American, I mentioned African American because primary students are African American um, in, in the schools, right? Uh, minority, minority. Sixty percent of our students are Hispanic, and about 30, 35 percent of our students are African American. So okay. we're a majority minority uh, school district. Minority um, programs for minority students. Uh, can you? Is there any specific effort that you're making to make them see people like them in the school? And that could be uh, instructors, sure, um, administrators. Uh, you can see it on, on board members, they're there on board members, but what about teachers and, 
and the efforts that you're making for teachers and administrators? Well, I think our, our efforts at, at recruiting uh, a, a diverse um, a diverse workforce for our schools has really, um, I think we can see that in the administration um, and in the principals and in the leaders that, that I've hired since I've been in the school district. Um, and we, we see a, a, just a, a real wide diversity of, of leadership mm -hmm. um, in the school district and, and our, our principal core, the six principals that lead our school districts and in the senior leadership team for the district. Um, and so that intentional recruiting efforts of, of um, building connections, recruiting broadly, mm -hmm. hiring the best and brightest, um, we've seen that really pay off in our administration. Um, we, as in the state of Illinois, in, in the teaching force, um, there, there are not enough minority candidates in, in teaching positions, which is not to excuse our efforts, um, but we're going to need to work much harder to attract um, black and Hispanic mm -hmm. teaching candidates into the district. We travel across the country. Uh, we travel to uh, historically black colleges and universities to recruit. We travel to colleges across the country to recruit. Um, we're going to do a better job of keeping track of the, the folks that, that, that come to the district and where they came from so we know where our recruiting dollars are having the biggest benefit. Um, and we're going to increase that time and energy and resources that we put on, on, on recruiting mm -hmm. um, so that we have students and, and teachers and administrators that, um, that, that our students see themselves reflected in the, in the people that work with them every day. What are your personal evaluation? You think it's the it's the salary of the uh, of the district? Or, or what? I think that's a major factor, um, and and we've started to address that. We have a new collective bargaining agreement, uh, so we're increasing salaries significantly over the next three years in North Chicago, so we can better compete. Um, I think it's also about providing our teachers with the very best learning environment that we can, and making sure that they've got the materials that they need. Uh, that they've got the heat that they need in the in the wintertime and they've got the <laughs> air conditioning in the summertime uh, when it's hot um, and that they've got the support that they need to support our students. So I think there's a lot that we can do uh, over the next few years to improve on salary and compensation but also improve on the working environment for our teachers. So you do have recruiting teams? Uh we do and we use our teachers and admin. Um, mm. So if you graduated from Illinois State, we're going to send you there to help us recruit. Well, um, you know, if you graduated from another you know, university in, in, in another part of the country, we're going to ask you and send you there to help us recruit. So we try and use the connections that our staff, teachers and, um, and administrators have to build those relationships with universities. Um, and so there's a familiar face uh, and somebody who said, I, I've done it. I, did, I came from yep. here and now I'm in North Chicago and, and this is what I'm doing. So uh, we do use our own people to go out on those recruiting trips. Yeah, I was wondering because um, I, I know down our state they have a, um, a, a team there um, that uh, they organize for this purpose to assist uh, teachers when they go out, you know, mm -hmm. they can always lean on. So if you need any assistance, then I could, well, I'll do it anyway. I'll refer. The head, the head of the organization to you and so forth because there, there are many teachers colleges out there. There are. Yeah. yeah but like I say, whether well, you can attract them to, uh, to come to, I guess maybe other schools are having the same problem. Well there is across the state, um, especially in the area of special education and bilingual education, um, competition for candidates. And the majority of those vacancies are in majority minority districts and in high poverty districts. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's where we see the majority of those vacancies. I just like to just make a note here that uh, that of the history of superintendents of uh, schools in, uh, in, in the North Chicago School District. When I came to this area, you probably know the name of A.J. Katzemeyer. Sure. Yeah, there's a school name of him. He was, uh, I served on the board for five years. Uh, he was uh, along with Alexander and Archie Nixon. So, but he was, his tenure was 29 years. As superintendent. As superintendent. Wow. Okay, when he retired. And following him, just happened to be an African-American uh, superintendent, 
Dr. Charles R. Thomas. Mm -hmm. He's was from Evingston. Okay. I don't know whether you know that name or not. I, I do know that name, and, and he's got family that still work in the district. Yes. yes. He does have yeah. a, yes, okay, you, you're right on top of it there. Yeah. And uh, he stayed here 16 years. Right. Okay, for those two. But since that time, we've had uh, superintendents trickling in one year, two, three years at mm -hmm. a time. And I, I, I don't have that number, but it is a great number of superintendents that have been, a great number that have been in North Chicago uh, since these two superintendents were, were here. And, and I wonder, you know, what, do you have any idea of uh, why they don't stay? No, uh, <laughs> I haven't, haven't met any of them personally. Uh, being a superintendent is hard. It's hard work. Um, I can tell you that I'm uh, more more committed and, and happier uh, with, with my work this year than I was at this time last okay. year. I feel okay. hap uh, you know, I'm very proud to be here. And uh, we know that stability uh, is important for our students. Um, and we're building a mission statement and building our goals, and we need to stick with them. And the teachers and the students really benefit from the stability of having a plan, um, planning the work, and working the plan. Um, and so the, that, that stability is important for our school district. I want to thank you very much. Uh, oh, it's been my pleasure. For literally taking time for your business schedule and your <laughs> business <laughs> schedule. <laughs> and people just know how, how uh, fortunate I was to get you to come on the program. Well, it's my pleasure. Really, really Glad to do it. it. Thank you for your time. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been talking with Mr. John Price, Superintendent of North Chicago School District Number 187, who's been sharing uh, uh, his experiences with us as superintendent and giving us an update of the programs and, uh, and uh, goals and objectives of uh, his tour here so far, which is the second year tour here in the, uh, uh, in the city of North Chicago, and plan to uh, reach one of the goals of our prior superintendents, A.J. Casimir, 29 years, <laughs> Charles R. Thomas, All right. uh, 16 years. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Community Forum my name is Dr. Waddell Brooks, Sr., your host. <laughs>